Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear saints, great to see you on this Friday, the second week of Easter as we gather. Our, Old Te- or our psalm for today is Psalm 92, and the New Testament lesson, the Gospel reading, we are entering into chapter 6 of St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, the psalm for today, the first nine verses of Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know, the fool cannot understand this. The thoughts of the wicked sprout like grass, all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold your enemies, O Lord, for behold your enemies shall perish, all evildoers shall be scattered. Again, another psalm that reminds us that the foolishness of this world does not know God. The foolishness of this world will never be able to understand or believe in God's word and promises. And the foolishness of this world will always try to convince us to believe in that foolishness. It will always try to pull us away from the hope and promise we have in the scriptures to what the world is doing. We see this so often when a church or a church body begins to imitate the message of the world instead of preaching Christ crucified. And that is not hard to see in so many places in our world. We continue to do like Paul urges us. We preach Christ crucified for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work, the cross, the death, the resurrection, the glorious promise that your sins are forgiven because of Christ. That's what we preach, and that is our hope. As we jump into the gospel reading for today, this is Luke chapter 6. On a Sabbath, while he was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked and ate some of the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? And he and those who were with him, how they entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those with him. And he said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, so that they might find a reason to accuse him. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man with the withered hand, Come and stand here. And he rose and stood there, and Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or destroy it? And after looking around at them all, he said to them, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. In these days he went out from the mountain to pray, And at night he continued in prayer to God. And when he came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named as apostles, Simon, who he named as Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas 
and James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them, and he stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him, and he healed them of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. This is the word of the Lord. At the beginning of this, Jesus again is trying to, they're trying to trap Jesus. They want to trap him in their laws. And they have a very incorrect understanding of the law. The law of God is good. The Ten Commandments are good. They are good for us. But we have to make sure we understand the whole purpose of the law. What does the law do? Certainly the law restricts behavior. Jesus says, you shall not, or thou shalt not. That's very clear what it says. But is that all that it says? Is the law just simply to tell us what we can't do, and then if we don't do that, are we saved by keeping the law? No, absolutely not. We're not saved by keeping the law. The law has another purpose. Now, I've used this analogy a number of times out West River here. We see uh, ranchers, and they have, out in their fields, they have stacks of hay that they've, they've cut through the summer. They put the hay up. The hay is going to feed their cows in the winter. But if they leave the hay on its own, unprotected, what will happen? Well, the deer will come up, and they will eat. And deer aren't satisfied just eating on the ground. They continue to go up, and they destroy the rest of the hay so the cows won't eat it. So what do you do to protect the hay? You put a fence around it. Now, does the fence detour the deer? Yes, it does. Is that the only purpose? No, the fence is to protect the hay for the purpose it was intended. The law of God given to us certainly does say stop this far and no farther. But the law also wants to protect something so that you and I can receive a gift from God. Now, as we look at that, it's the Sabbath. For Jesus, that's a Saturday, the Sabbath. And the Jews of that day, the Pharisees, they had a very strict law of what you could or couldn't do on the Sabbath. Now, they believed that by keeping the law, you are a good Jew and you'll be saved by your work. So you can't do any work on Sunday. Jesus and his disciples are walking through the grain field. You know how this might be, wheat or barley. You run the heads through your hand, you close it, and you put some some grain in your hand, and you rub it to get the chaff off, and then you can eat that. That's work. They couldn't do that. That broke the Sabbath. You see, they were trying to find a way to accuse Jesus. There's a man in the temple whose hand is withered, Uh, maybe an injury or a birth defect or something, and Jesus asks them, is it right on the Sabbath to heal? And there are, even in the laws, there are cases in the law that says it's right to do good on the Sabbath. But the Pharisees don't want to bring that up. They're waiting to see Jesus do this so they can accuse him of working on the Sabbath, even though the work is for the good of the man. You see, dear saints, keeping the law does not save us. Not working on Sunday just to keep the law is not enough. We can't stop there. I didn't work on Sunday, therefore I'm okay. I had a Jewish professor in college who said when he was growing up in his household, it was work to turn the television channel to a different station. So they couldn't do that. So on Saturday night or Friday night for them, before the Sabbath started, they would turn it to the channel where they wanted to watch football. And then at 2 o'clock, when they wanted to watch a different game, they called their neighbor who came over and turned the channel for them so they could watch and they didn't break the Sabbath. Is that really what the Sabbath is all about? Or does God say to us, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy so that we might Push aside our selfishness. Push aside our need for more money or whatever it might be and worship on that day. 
that you and I might gather in God's house, not because he says so, so that we could say, I kept the law, I went to church, but so that we might receive the very gifts that God has set aside for us. Do you see, dear saints, when we look at the law, we are not saved by the law. We're saved by what the law is protecting. The love and the mercy of Jesus for you. As we go forward, as Jesus goes forward, he heals the man with the withered hand because that's what Jesus does. He gives mercy. He gives peace. For us, as we gather and worship on Sunday, he gives us forgiveness of sins. He gives us strength. He gives us that peace. He gives us assurance. He strengthens our faith. All of that is so that we would receive these promises. The the Pharisees are only interested in finding some way to accuse Jesus to get him out. And Jesus himself says that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. That it is his gifts. Worship him, not the day. But set apart the day that we might receive the gifts. We see the naming of the 12 apostles here. Remember, the apostles are the 12 that are, they are truly set aside for an early purpose right here in the church. And we have their names here. And then Jesus continues on here. He goes down to them and he stands on a level place. This often, we're going to pick up the rest of this tomorrow, but this often is referred to as the Sermon on the Plain. We have the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, blessed are, we'll see that tomorrow in the reading, blessed are again. But uh, probably a different event, but more than likely, as a good teacher would, he teaches the same thing in different places for different groups. Dear saints, as we go forward today, remember that the law is given to us for a purpose. It is to protect us, but also to protect the gifts of God that we might receive them, that we might live in them. Because our Lord wants to restore, not to destroy. This is the word of the Lord for this day. Thanks be to God. As we go forward today, we look for the catechetical review. And of course, as we're looking at what Jesus was preaching about today, it brings us right back to the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching in his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Hold sacred the preaching of God's word and the receiving of that word of forgiveness and the receiving of the sacraments. Our Lord's desire is to give us, to restore us, to give us these gifts that we might live in peace with him. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for today and all the gifts you have given to us. We ask that you would continue to watch over us. Father, we pray that we would hear and listen on the Sabbath to you and your word, that we would not despise your gifts, but joyfully and freely come to your worship and receive them for us, not only on the Sabbath, but each and every day as we receive your word with glad and sincere hearts. Hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me also this day from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, you have an enjoyable day. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.